his right hand, walking in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. And previously he said that the uh, uh, seven stars which thou sawest, chapter 1, verse 20, are the angels. In other words, uh, the preachers are in his hand. They're in his right hand. Hallelujah. And that's one way to get close to God is get close to the ministry and gospel preaching. Praise God. Because they're not very far from God. They're in his hand. And you can get awful close to the hand of God by knowing them, getting to know them, which labor among you. Uh, uh, these things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand and walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, which is the church triumphant. Amen. I know thy works, thy labors, thy patience, how thou canst not bear them which are evil. Sounds like a holiness church to me, don't you? Come on. Amen. And has tried them which say they're apostles and are not, and found them liars. Very zealous, Richard, for the Lord of hosts. Amen. And found them liars, and hast borne, and hast patience. I mean some of the great virtues that we need. Amen. Right here. For my name's sake, and hast labored. In other words, that's hard work. You, you, you've labored, worked very hard for God, and hast not faded. That is, become weak and quit. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. Then comes the verdict. Because thou hast left thy first love. Some translations read, Thou hast left me thy first love. They got all involved in the work of God and even good things and forgot about Jesus. Camp meeting season's over, and we've run the roads for God to trying to harvest these fields and create a catalyst to win more souls and create a catalyst for faith, for deliverance, for those that need healing. But oftentimes, we're more interested in seeing one another than we are Jesus. Oh, it's important to see one another. It's important to visit and fellowship and shake hat, glad hands with the elders. Uh, amen. But when we get to place, we're more interested in just making brownie points with others. We missed him if we're not careful. Thou hast left me thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen. And I paraphrased me in that reading. Left thy first love, the authorized King James said. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen. Fallen? A holiness church fallen? With all these good things going for them, fallen? And repent and do the first works. Or else I'll come unto thee quickly and remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent but this thou hadst I'll say one thing for you he said thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans which I also hate amen chalk one up for Ephesus amen in all their hates and they hated a lot of things amen they even claimed to hate sin false prophets but they got all wrapped up in this hate thing and Forgot to love Jesus. Amen. He said, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. To him that overcometh, I'll give to eat of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God. I'd like to preach briefly this morning. One chance. One chance. What is it? One chance for a church in the shape that Ephesus was in that had had the greatest preachers, and this wasn't no slouch that was writing this letter to them. Amen. 
I mean, they was getting this letter straight from John the Beloved who had preached in their pulpit that had the greatest men, amen, that ever wore shoe leather, men that rubbed elbows, walked arm in arm. John lay on his breast at the Last Supper. A letter from John. What a boom today. They'd put it up for auction. It would sell. Amen. For millions of dollars. A letter from John with his own signature on it. My God, what a boon that would be. Amen. And I'm sorry to say that that's all that a lot of people would be interested in. They'd be telling everybody, hey, our church got a letter from John. He did? What did he say? I don't know, but we got a letter from the greatest preacher that ever lived. One of the greatest preachers that ever walked. Amen. And he preached love. He did. But that's not all he preached. He preached love not. <laughs> Amen. Love not the world. Neither the things are in the world. Amen. He that loveth the world is an enemy of God. John preached that. Amen. Repent was their only chance. To continue. They were going out of business just like that store I seen in Opelika, Alabama at a factory outlet mall. Amen. I was walking through it and I passed the store. Amen. And a big sign on the front of the store said, Closed forever. And I passed it up real quick and walked on by and still small voice spoke to me and I said, No, Lord, I I, I can't preach on that tonight. I don't have any background on that. I don't. Uh, I haven't thought about it till just now. How can I preach on it, Lord? And, amen. The Lord told me to go to the revival and preach on closed forever. Amen. Ephesus has one chance, and then, having missed that, she'll be thrown into darkness. Her light will be put out. She will lose her candlestick in the golden menorah of the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Repent! The church? Who? Repent? He's not talking to a bunch of ingrate heathen sinners now. He's writing to the church. What do you think he would say to the churches in Hamilton? Amen. This is what he said to the church 65 years after Christ. Praise God. Uh, I, I assume somewhere around that. I'll have to look again, but I'm just guessing there. Amen. Some 65 years after Christ was born. Amen. Some, somewhere around A.D. 65. He is telling the church to repent. Amen. And of all things, a holiness church. Look at it. Amen. A holiness church with a holiness preacher. The letter was written to the preacher, to the angel of the church. Amen. He bears part of the blame for their downfall. He will rise and fall and or fall with his church. Amen. And so he's calling the church to repent. Uh, a professed wholeness preacher that he called an angel to repent. Praise God. What does repent mean? It means turn around. Praise God. It means go back the way you come. Amen. Go back where? Go back to your first love. Amen. And do it before it's too late. Did you hear what I said? I said they had to repent before it's too late. It's too late after he's took away your 
candlestick is gone. Light's gone out. Just a stub sticking up where the candlestick was. Amen. And maybe he'll look around and find some little struggling movement, you know, and pick it up out of the dirt, praise God, and replace Ephesus. Amen. With another. Because that's just exactly what God has done through the years. He has taken them away one by one. All they continue to exist. But what good is it when you don't love Christ? When you just love the politics of the movement? You just love to buy and to gain place and to supersede and uh, uh, to uh, do one better than the next fella, to be number one. Amen. A fella worked with me on a job in Kansas City. I was doing a drywall job, and he was doing something in the same house. Amen. He went to Brother Dollar's church in Kansas City, and Brother Dollar was a Bible Baptist preacher in Kansas City, and he said, we're number one. And I didn't say anything when he said that. And he said, everybody wants to be number one. Well, if being number one gets people in the shape they're in, and a whole bunch of others are in, being recognized as number one, I'd rather be way on down the list somewhere than to be number one. Number one in who eyes? Who, who, who chalked it up number one? Who said it was number one? Amen. Men get to interested in counting nickels and noses and vying and excelling and succeeding and outdoing the next fella. Amen. And blowing his own horn. And we got a whole bunch of people. Amen. That's all been out of shape in Hamilton and, and, and Southern Ohio trying to scratch their own back and blow their own horn at the same time. Hallelujah. Repent before it's too late. Repent. Praise God while Jesus is talking to you. Repent while a still small voice can still be heard. Because, amen, as Howard Bell Wright said in The Shepherd of the Hills, he closed it out. We build the most beautiful of churches and don't go to them. We hire the greatest of advisors and don't listen to them. We, we provide the best of counselors and pay no attention to what they say. For it is only after we can no longer amen by in this world for name and acclaim with ears deafened by the din of this world and eyes blinded. Amen. We strive to see and hear the things which we so long refused to consider. Too late. Amen. Some that have read Harold Bell Wright's words, they found in his writings, Harold Bell Wright was alibying in his novels for the fact that he had left the ministry and wouldn't preach the gospel. Amen. God help. Praise God. Too late. Too late. Repent. Go back to your first love. Who? Christ. Love Jesus. Amen. Oh, get so close to Him. Praise God that you can almost see His face. And you can sing again with reality and earnest, honest, true desire. Oh, I want to see Him. Look upon His face. There to sing forever of His saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. You know what the church today is singing in their hearts? 
wait a little longer, please Jesus. And their alibi for waiting a little longer, please Jesus, is a few more days to get our loved ones in. While at the very same time they know that the longer they live, the more their loved ones are going to hell. And the longer we go on and exist, the more we watch people backslide, and the more we watch people apostatize. Preachers, angels of the church, and people too. The minister, the clergy, and the lay also. Amen. Hey, repent or be abandoned to darkness. That's what happens when your light's gone. Amen. It's dark when your lights go. Amen. There's nothing to light when your lights go. Would someone please turn on the light? Uh, what? Light? Oh, seemed like I remember that one time maybe there was light. One time the old time preachers preached that way. We don't. We don't preach that anymore. We're 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 more learned and we're more uh, educated and we've been taught how to get along without it. So we grope our way in our spiritual blindness through the darkness and alibi for our spiritual weakness. Amen. But the light that once we had no longer shines. Amen. I was in a revival in Bates, Oklahoma. Jess Yoss and his mother pastored the church. He had a bunch of sisters, just one boy, a bunch of sisters. I honestly didn't know any of them was saved. None of them went to church. Amen. And one night, one of them came to church. Amen. And she got down in the altar when we was praying the altar, and the next thing I know, she was shouting, Amen, and praising God, and she caught me looking at her. She said, I saw you looking at me. You didn't know I was saved, did you? No, I didn't. Her fruits didn't betray her. Amen. But when she got in church, she was just like apostate King Saul. Amen. She began to shout with the rest of them. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. People learned how to do it. Amen. Uh, and then when, uh, when old Mike Hemrick called me, amen, from down in the, the Covington jail, he was talking in tongues, trying to impress me. Amen. And he would talk in other tongues for a few minutes, and then he would interpret his own message. I know in whom I have believed, he'd say, and I'm persuaded, and he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. And I listened to him for a while, and I said, What have you been drinking, Mike? Because I realized he was drunk on the wrong line. And it wasn't heavenly either. Amen. He said, Budweiser beer. Amen. Under the influence of Budweiser beer. Amen. Mike was talking in tongues and interpreting in self-defense. He wanted to impress me so I'd come down and bail him out. Amen. I was not impressed and I didn't bail him out. Amen. I'd already, we, the church had gone the limit for Mike. We'd give him place to stay. Sister Collins cooked for him and took care of him. Amen. And we looked out after his needs. And when he got a little money, he left and went down and bought him some cigarettes and some beer. Called me from Cincinnati where he went to pick up some of his stuff he'd left somewhere. I went down and picked him up. He got in the car. I said, Mike, you smell like a cigar store. He said, yeah. He said, I smoked some cigarettes. I said, how many beers did you drink, Mike? He said, just one. I said, you can't stay in evangelist quarters no more, Mike. That's it for you. Amen. And the church even paid for a month's rent down here in the Presbyterian Hotel that they keep men off the street on. Our church did. Amen. We helped Mike. And when we put him out of the evangelist quarters, we paid for him a place to stay. It's up to him to do the thing is right and keep it. 
He didn't. Amen. God's people will give you a chance. God will give you a chance. He'll give you more than one chance. Amen. He'll try to help you. Amen. Jesus will try to help you. He's reaching this very morning with nail-scarred hands to salvage our lives, our hearts, our souls. We got one chance this morning, and that's repent and do it quick. Mike called me this week, first time in a year or so. He could still quote scripture. He remembered the tapes and all the things that I preached. All the things that I taught him. Amen. He said, would you pray for a poor old man like me? Say a prayer for me. And I did. I prayed out of the earnestness of my soul for Mike. He don't get the tapes anymore. He hasn't for a good long while. Amen. He had one chance. Where did he fumble it? When did he fumble it? How did he do it? Amen. Today is the day of salvation, folks. It was now or never the still small voice was speaking to the church just like it did me when I was 14 years old and got saved. Dub didn't hear that still small voice, but I did. And even if he dubbed you, didn't go to the altar with me. My dad's funeral, y'all met E.W. at the Gooseneck Cafe. He was sitting there eating steak and eggs, and I sat down and talked to him a little while. Some of you met Dub. Since then, he got saved and started preaching. I don't know how he's doing or why he's doing, but he's even been here and preached for us. I was glad that Dub finally heard the still, small voice. Amen. Hallelujah. You got one chance to repent, and if you don't, be abandoned to darkness, candlestick removed, or, hallelujah, in that state of mind, repentance and going back to Jesus and meeting business with God, be an overcomer. That's how to be an overcomer, incidentally, is be a good repenter. I don't care if you have to admit to repent a thousand times. Seventy times seven. Praise God. Repent and be an overcomer some way, somehow, any way you can. Be an overcomer. Amen. Yeah, follow the Lord. Get baptized. Amen. If you wander far, far away from God and go deep, deep, deep in sin, get, by the, get baptized the second time like Rick is tonight. Amen. Uh, first time like Dwayne is tonight. Uh, first time like some more are tonight. Praise God. Going to have a baptizing tonight. Hey, hallelujah. You can be an overcomer. Just do what God invites you to do. He says, come on. He said, and he that overcometh, I'll give to eat of the tree of life. Praise God. Just one bite of that fruit and you never can die. <laughs> Just one bite of that fruit. Praise God. Healed forever. Hallelujah. Woo, eat of the tree which is in the paradise of God. Hey, it'd be enough for most of us just to have a little spot in the corner of the paradise. But here we've got a free ticket, praise God, to the tree of life. The river of life. The paradise of God. Just because... We fought this good fight of faith. We went all the way back to God. Hallelujah. And this, I'm preaching this to holiness church. Forget about the Presbyterians, Methodists, Baptists, Episcopalians, and Catholics. Hallelujah. Let's clean up our own back door. This morning, preacher, repent. Laity, repent. If Jesus is not preeminent, repent. Hallelujah. I've been to the camp meetings. It's good for preachers to go to camp meetings. Because, boy, in these camp meetings, you get a good washing. Because they preach against everything you can think of. And some things you never thought of. And on the anointing of the Spirit, praise God, 
Hallelujah. They preached against everything. Glory to God that can drag you down and hinder you in the service of God. Praise God. Amen. And I've been through the purifying fires of camp meeting again. We need it as preachers, Oak. Amen. I've been through the purifying fire. You know what some people does? They stay away. Because they know what them holders folks are going to preach in them camp meetings. Amen. Some of the women stays away. Because they know what them holders preachers are going to preach against in them camp meetings. Amen. They're going to bust everything in sight. Oh, glory to God. Amen. They're going to straighten out everything that's crooked. Glory to God. Amen. But after we do it, let's be dead sure that we're not just hiding behind that. Huh? To alibi for our own failures and incompetence. Bless your heart. Amen. Let's mean business with God. And let's repent. I know some folks, you know, they preach a holier brand of holiness than anybody. And they're looking for ways to preach more holiness than anybody else. Amen. You know what they're doing? They're hiding behind it. While they walk at work, all manner of concupiscence behind the scenes and in private life. Hallelujah. Let's be honest to God and honest with God and get down to business and pray through over and over again if we have to. Amen. Crawl, walk. Amen. Swim. My God, do whatever you have to do to make it but be an overcomer. Amen. It's going to be worth it to wind up in paradise and eat of the tree of life. Hallelujah. Stand and let's pray this morning Father bless our remarks our challenge Lord as a church in many cases has one chance one more angel of mercy came by with a message from God and told us what we must do Amen and we have another chance not to take the way of a backsliding and apostasy that other movements have and eventually denied the faith and became worse than infidels while claiming Christ, Christianity, and the church. Lord, I pray that we'll stay among the come-outers, but while we come out from this world and hate everything that sticks his head up that's wrong, Lord, help us to love Jesus and love one another. And love the lost souls of men. Hallelujah. And realize that God didn't make us holy to make us better than anybody else. But He made us holy that we might bless everybody else. 